Hi, David. Yes. Hi, it's Debbie Kunish. How are you? I'm good, Debbie. How are you? Good. Is this going to be an okay time for you? Sure. Okay. Um, I first just wanted to explain a little bit, you know, what I wanted to cover. Um, and uh, first of all, I wanted to thank you very much for doing this interview with me today. Sure, you're welcome. And um, it, it's, great to t it's great to talk to you again. I, we did our last um, in-depth interview back in 2010. Uh -huh. And that was wonderful and really informative. And I'm going to reference that link in this interview as well for those who would like oh. to listen. All right. So that they can go back. Because um, believe it or not, there's still people finding that interview that hadn't heard it before. Oh, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they find it and they're like, oh, my gosh, I didn't know how I missed this. You know, because you did such a great great job telling stories about Michael. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and then in, in the interview today, um, sort of what, you know, the direction I wanted to go in was I wanted to recap on a few things. Mm -hmm. And then also uh, speak about some of the current issues going on in regards to Michael, different, you know, stories that are going around, different, you know, and, and um, discuss a little bit on the Sullivan book, which we had talked about. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, get your opinions on those and also field a few questions from the fan base. People had sent me in questions for you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so if that's okay yeah. with you. Sure, um, that'd be great. Okay. Um, okay, so first of all, um, you and Michael were friends for 20 years. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. So, and um, you had some things in common, uh, you know, creative genius. You also had troubled childhoods. I, I had read you left at home at the age of 12. Yeah. Wow. That's <laughs> very young. That's right. <laughs> So now that gave that gave the two of you a bond and camaraderie, I imagine. To yeah, I, I think it kind of did. We, you know, we talked about that the very first night that Michael called. But okay. You know, that time he called me, it was like midnight, one one o'clock in the morning. I don't know, but I was working, and you know, I picked up the phone. I, I was expecting an emergency or something because. Oh sure. Nobody, nobody calls me at one in the morning. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> And his voice said, uh, this is Michael Jackson. <laughs> and I thought, oh, God, kids playing on the phone. <laughs> right. And then he said, thank you for sending the show brochures and, and photos. So then I realized that, that I had been sending those to him oh, okay. in California. Sure. And uh, what, was, <laughs> what was my point again? <laughs> You, oh, about the having the shared um, childhood. And yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and so then uh, we started talking on the phone, and and God, I think we talked for about an hour. Oh wow. Yeah, and so we kind of made that connection kind of mm -hmm. early on. Sure. And then uh, you know, and then I was able to see him up in Denver uh, a couple months later. Okay. Okay, um, and then, so, it, uh, yeah, we had talked about you had had that connection early on, and, yeah. then, and then you said you got to see him in Denver? Yeah, that was, uh, I, I talked to him on the phone in February. Okay. Actually, then uh, I met him in Denver when he was, you know, when he was on the bad tour. Oh, okay, okay. And I spent a week with him up there. Okay. And went to the concerts. Sure. What was that like? Was that your first time seeing him in concert? It was, yeah. I was, uh, you know, I was a big fan of his actually sure. before, but I'd never gone to a concert. Mm -hmm. And so that was a new experience. And uh, I was really impressed. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I imagine. Yeah. Well, that show traveled in 17 semis. Oh, plus, my goodness. Plus this humongous tractor trailer generated generator that they would hook up to the to the electrical system. Okay. Because uh, that stadium didn't have enough power. Oh. To run the equipment. Oh wow. And, okay. Yeah, and they had to. So that was running wide open, and then uh, they had guys up by the fuse boxes mm -hmm. that sprayed those constantly with uh, fire extinguishers during the show to keep them cool. Oh my goodness. Yeah, just, you know, just amazing. Well, you know, backstage, the, some of those yeah. tables are like three inches in diameter, you know, and they're running all over. Oh, wow. Back there, just thick. You had to walk on top of them. Yeah. 
And that's stuff you don't normally think of when you're going to see a show. You're not thinking of all the things that are going on behind the scene, and especially a sh the show that Michael Jackson would put on. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You're sitting out front. All you see is what you see. Right, right. And it doesn't look complicated to you. <laughs> right. It looks good. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, when you see what goes into setting that up. Oh, and the goodness. food. Oh, the food was amazing backstage. Oh, yeah. They had all these tables set up with food for everybody because, uh, you know, the... The stage crew was huge. Oh, yeah, sure, I imagine. Yeah, plus all the, and the, all the other people that are in, in Michael's show that are running all the lights and, mm -hmm. and uh, dancers and everybody. Oh, yeah. But it was, it was a great experience. Yeah, I imagine that has to be something you'll always remember. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, know, I actually never got to see him in concert, and I always regret that. I would have oh, loved to see him in concert. It was really something, cause, but that was always Michael's aim, you know, was to was to give everybody a great show. Mm -hmm. Not just a good show, but a great show. Sure. And one that you would talk about after you left, you know, and that was always the case with Michael. Was, you know, his productions were amazing. <laughs> it was very oh, expensive, the things that he did. Sure, you know, sure. And also to his health. I mean, when he came off stage, he had to have uh, IVs of fluid. Yeah. Because he had dehydrated to the point where it was really dangerous. Wow. So that you have to be working pretty hard to get to that point. I know. <laughs> and that's why when I first met him up in Denver, I said, I said, you must work out. And he looked at me and said, no, but I should, shouldn't I? <laughs> I said, well, everything seems to be going pretty good. Right. I don't know if I'd change anything. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. As if he wasn't getting enough of a workout from the all the dancing he did. <laughs> good Lord, I know. <laughs> And dance is one of the, that's one of the hardest workouts there is. I, of course it I, you is. Know. Of course it is. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and and he would do that at home, you know. Oh, yeah. He'd turn on music and dance for hours. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was that was one way that he always cleared his head. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, do, it does clear your head, yeah. Yeah. And especially as long as he would do it, you know. It's oh, kind sure. of a mantra, you know. Mm-hmm. Did you ever see him dance at, at home? Were no, you over I, there? Well, I've seen him do little little jigs, kind of, you know. Oh, okay. He'll do little steps, and that, and that, those happen kind of at times when I forget who I'm with. Uh, oh, sure. You know, we're just hanging out, a couple <laughs> mm -hmm. guys, you know. Sure. And then all of a sudden, he'll do one of these little things, and I'll go, oh, shit, that's right, that's Michael Jackson. <laughs> 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 or he would do these these things with his mouth, like making different sounds and fucking noises. Oh, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Would, and he would tap himself, you know, on his mm -hmm. legs and his chest and his stomach and his cheeks. Yeah. And do the most interesting percussive uh, things. God, I was just mesmerized by that. Yeah. I, you know, I saw some of that on, um, there was some of it on YouTube that they had, I don't know who recorded it and where, you know, where it was, but oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll have to send it to you because, mm. yeah, it was just, I remember seeing that and I'm like, oh my goodness, it's like, it, it, you you feel like you're listening to drums and, I mean, yeah. he, he was, he was excellent at that. Oh my God, he would, and he, he would just do these things, you know, just subconsciously kind of. Oh really, it would just come yeah. out like he'd be sitting there and. Well, when, when we're walking along or something, you know. And, oh my goodness. And. And he would just do those things, you know. They're just, God, yeah. they're just incredible. Yeah. Well, that yeah, that had to be pretty cool to experience that oh, live yeah. while you're right there. Yeah. Absolutely. And then he would sing too, but he he wouldn't sing like Michael Jackson. He would sing like somebody would in the shower. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that would just, every time he did that, it would just crack me up. <laughs> <laughs> so did he do it? Did he do that to be funny, or that just what he he just would? It was kind of like the the other where it was just coming out. Oh, I think I think both. Okay. I actually think both. Yeah. But but he would do that, and and they, he had another. Uh, there was a hill out of the ranch where uh, it was this hollering hill. Okay. And he would, he would go up there and yell at the top of his lungs. 
when I when I first started doing that, you know, people at the ranch, especially security, is totally freaked out. Oh know? my gosh, sure. But then they, they you know, they they uh, adjusted to it. Yeah. And, <laughs> and that happened. <laughs> Nobody, <laughs> and I, I was surprised at the timbre of his voice because oh. he he doesn't have a real harsh voice. Sure. You know? Yeah. But man, that guy could holler. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> and Lori, Lori was at the ranch when Michael and I were up there, and Michael did that. Oh no! Yeah, and, and she was with uh, Marvin and, and one of the little chimps. Okay. And she said the chimp got really scared when he heard oh. that. Oh. Just hanging on to Marvin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, what the heck is that? <laughs> yeah, but that's you know that's what the what the ranch represented to him. You know mm -hmm. he would. That was his place where he could come. There were 2,800 acres there. Uh, wow. He could just roam around by himself, especially at night. He liked to go out at night because of his vitiligo. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in the daytime, he'd always have to have umbrellas and yeah. you know, all the cumbersome stuff. But he loved going out after the sun went down. Okay. And, you know, we used to cruise around in his four-wheel drive. Okay, yeah. You know, around the ranch, and I, I don't know if I mentioned that before, but we were, and the ranch is pretty rugged. Those are mountains. Oh, right, right. Yeah, and so, you know. So was that a little scary to be riding well, at night? and yeah, a little bit on the <laughs> Fall edge. off the mountain. Yeah, we came to this one place, there's this really steep ravine that went way down. Oh. And Michael said, you think, you think we can make it? I said, God, don't ask me, you're oh, driving. God. You know, was, and he did, we went down. And, oh my gosh. You know, it was a little, little wild, but we got to the bottom. He was actually a really good driver. Oh, okay. He really was, because I've, you know, driven other places with him. So yeah, and see, and see, that was, there's a lot of rumors that he wasn't a good driver. So he, that's not, those weren't true then. Well, I didn't experience that, and I've yeah. been in, in the vehicle with him many times. That, okay. You know, I, you would think, because while he's driving, we're talking, there's also a TV there with uh, with cartoons. Oh, outside? No, in, in on the dash of the car. Oh, really? Yeah, and oh. and <laughs> in the back are his two big speakers, and they're playing music. Oh my goodness! And but he he's very much in control. Very good driver. I was very impressed with. Wow. Him. Yeah. That's multitasking at its best. <laughs> well, I didn't know if he drove, you know, because when I'd gone places with him at first, it was always with he and, and uh, uh, Evie. Or, not, no, not Evie. Oh, God. I'm having a senior moment. <laughs> That's okay. I have those, too. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, you know, she would always drive. His personal assistant would always drive. Oh, okay. And, you know, so if the three of us went someplace, but if just the two of us, Michael drove, and he, he, would, he drove really good. Oh, wow. I was impressed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that, he, that's why he loved the ranch. You know, he he loved going there. there. There were like 250 outdoor speakers. Wow, wow. And so there was always great music playing every night. And mm -hmm. when I remember uh, the first night Lori and I were there, uh, <laughs> when it got dark and the, there were birds singing up the trees all over the, these humongous trees, you know. Yeah. And so Lori was thinking, God, this this place is so magical the birds even sing at night, <laughs> which they don't. <laughs> but he had he had these recordings of bird songs. Oh my goodness! Wow. And play all, and it was very relaxing. That yeah. and the fountains, you know, the fountains out in the lakes. Oh wow! It's going and and uh, great music. Yeah, it sounds like a paradise. Like oh, yeah. wow! It was absolute paradise. I hated leaving. Yeah, and I uh, imagine there too, he felt like he could just be himself and yeah, you know, where I, I assume that he didn't get that, you know, when he was out in public or or you know, other places, it he always yeah. had to be in disguise or he had to have bodyguards or yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean there uh, were there was security there, but but they were sure. you know they knew that they were supposed to stay out of sight. Mm -hmm. You know they were not going to be roaming right near Michael. Oh, okay. They, they would always kind of make sure they knew where Michael was. Yeah. In general, 
but nobody's no security following us around or or anything like that because that that was his design. He did not want to see security. I don't. Yeah, I wouldn't blame him. He's yeah. Sick of it. He'd been sure. Having to have security ever since he was a little kid. Yeah. And uh, so, but but otherwise he felt free to roam, you know, and, mm -hmm. and we did, and and uh, he absolutely loved that, and and of course, first of all, I mean, it wasn't. The ranch wasn't for that purpose. The ranch was to help kids. Sure, yeah. And to entertain children. Mm hmm So uh, that was the first reason for, for the ranch and the, and the important reason for the ranch. And, of course, a lot, a lot of kids came there. Yeah, yeah. A lot of kids. And I know that um, recently in, a, in an interview I was listening to, and I know um, uh, Tom Mesro had mentioned this before, that um, it, uh, Mr. Mesro, he was the one who suggested after the trial that Michael leave Neverland because yeah. of, you know, you know that this could happen to him again, how he was going to be course. a target. Of course. And, uh, Especially after that trial, you know, because the, the, the prosecutor from L.A. had been after him for 10 years. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he'd even, he was even writing a book, you know. Oh, really? Yeah, and then Michael got, uh, you know, got acquitted. And boom, there goes your book. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, they were sure they had you. Yeah, they were yeah. waiting for, you know, whatever they could. Absolutely. How they could benefit, yeah. Any any way possible. So, yeah. Yeah, Tom, and, and Tom was absolutely right. Mm -hmm. And Michael wouldn't have stayed there anyway, because once a cop came through the ranch, went through everything, trashed everything at the ranch. Yeah. There's no way Michael could ever. Yeah, I remember reading. He said it was almost. It was like it had been. Um, I forget the word he used. Violated. It, yeah, yeah, and I imagine that's how it must have felt. And and I know um, Tom had said that the um, you know that Michael obviously at the same time was sad to have to leave it because it oh. had been such a haven for him. Yeah. No, and and that was that was his dream. So, yeah. His dream was the ranch for children, you know, like he always told me, you know, mm -hmm. he said, we're all put on earth to do something. Yeah. I was put here to help kids. And that was the drive of his whole life. And you can imagine I felt after being accused of, of. Oh uh, my gosh, yeah. You know, he just, he couldn't believe it. I mean, mm -hmm. he just, he just couldn't believe that people could do that to him, you know. Sure, sure. And, you know, there was a, um. Uh, another recent, it was actually the same interview I was listening to, um, there's a, a radio show called King Jordan Radio, it's on the internet, yeah. and uh, Tom appeared on that show, and, and the host, um, Jordan, the host, had played a, a clip of, it was a phone conversation recorded between Ryan White and Michael, oh. and I had never heard it before, and it was, it, it was the coolest thing to listen to, because you really got a sense, I mean, of uh, of just how humble he was, just and yeah. he was just really just talking to Ryan, trying to you know finding out how he was doing, and just you know how school going, and yeah. and and you listen to that, and I don't know how anyone could listen to that conversation and ever believe that he would have ever done anything to harm a child. Oh, he just couldn't have. Just, yeah, just not possible. I mm -hmm. mean, just absolutely not possible. No, no. He, he had so much respect for people, and he felt so deeply for all people, especially for children and and the poor and the downtrodden. Mm -hmm. Michael was always like that from the first time I met him till the last time I saw him. Yeah. He never changed. I mean, yeah. those, those were always his, you know, the principal things in his life. Everything else was done in order so he could do those things. Sure, sure. And now you... Um I think I had read that you didn't, you, the last time you saw Michael was, um, was it after the 2005 trial? No, it was be just before. before? Yep. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Were you able to stay in, in contact with him after when he left the country? No, uh -huh. actually, right after the trial, I, you know, I sent him a, a letter. Oh, okay. Because I, I didn't, obviously didn't want to try to call him or anything. I had been sure. talking to Evie, you know, his personal assistant. Oh, Okay. And so I kind of was keeping up to date on kind of what things were happening. Mm -hmm. Then I sent him a letter, but then boom, he just uh, he took off. Yeah. And I, you know, I can't blame him. I think that was the best thing for him to do, except you know, it's just 
you know, when you when you do that and you spend a long time at different people's houses, it's not your home. Right, right. You're never at home, mm -hmm. you know. And as human beings, we all we all treasure the times we have at our home. Sure, that's true. Yeah. Especially with him, you know, taking three children with him. Oh, right, right. And it's they're being very, uprooted each time, yeah. Yeah, and and uh, I know the kids enjoyed it mm -hmm. because they were still pretty little. You know? Right, right. So it's because sort of like an adventure to them, probably. Yeah. In some ways. Yeah, and and they'd lived at different places before, you know, like like Paris had been to Africa like three times before she was two years old. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so the, you know, they were well traveled and they had spent time at the ranch and had a couple of different houses, you know, in the city. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> so it wasn't a really big deal, I don't think, to the kids, but I, yeah. I know it was for Michael because that was, you know, that was always his concern, you know, coming up to that trial. Mm -hmm. You know, I never heard him say, poor me. You know what's going to happen to me? I never heard that from him. Yeah. The only thing I heard from him is what's going to happen to my kids. Yeah, yeah. What's going to happen to my kids? That was like we talked so much about that. It was amazing. Mm, yeah. He was totally worried about his kids. Oh sure. Well, and then probably thinking, okay, if they convicted him, you know, yeah. what's going to happen now? Because yeah, oh. yeah, for money and everything else. Mm -hmm. You know, if he, if he were to be convicted. It's just hard to tell what would happen to any monies that or properties or anything else that you own. What would happen to all that stuff? You know? Sure. Because you can't will it to anybody. You're still alive. Right. Right. And uh, so I don't know how. You know, I know he was terribly, terribly, terribly concerned about that. Mm hmm Oh yeah, I imagine, and that had to be such a weight to carry. You know. Um, for all that time and not knowing how things were going to turn out. Yeah, especially, you know, especially the fact that Michael, ever since I met him, has had problems with sleep. Oh, right, right. He has such an active mind mm -hmm. that it's hard for him to just lay down mm -hmm. and turn that off. Oh, yeah, yeah. It keeps running all the time. It just runs constantly. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, when I stayed with him down in La Jolla, you know, he'd asked it was okay if, you know, if he woke me up, he couldn't sleep. And I mm -hmm. said, yeah. And he said, oh, but then you'll be so tired. And I said, that's right. I'll get, you know, next day I'll catch a nap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so we would, you know, sometimes we'd come over to my room at three in the morning. Sometimes they even earlier than that. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And, you know, it's funny because I, I remember reading um, that he would a lot of times would fall asleep with lights on and the TV on. And, and, yeah. and I, you know, I do that myself because I, I can sort of, I mean, I, I, I'm not comparing myself at all to what he had to go through, but I, I have the same type of thing where my mind will stay going. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, a lot of times I'm writing things in my head because I, I'll think of an article I need to write or something and I, I'm writing in my head. And I almost have to have the television on in order to shut down yeah. my my mind. And so I'm, I'm envisioning that that's probably what he had to do. Yeah, it's like white noise. I don't know if I yeah. ever tried white noise. I don't, I don't know if he ever did. But Oh, yeah, that's, but, I actually had never tried that either, but I, yeah. that maybe that would have helped somehow. Yeah, my sister has uh, tinnitus, tinnitus. Oh, right, right. The ringing of the ears. Mm -hmm. So she has a white noise machine because that cancels. Oh, okay. Buzzing. Yeah. I have a friend who has that, too. I wonder if she's ever tried that. I'll have to tell her about it. Yeah, you should. Because yeah. Because it, it does help cancel the ringing in the ears. Oh, okay. Yeah, but, you know, uh, a lot of times Michael would, you know, he try to go to bed about 11 o'clock. Okay. And then sometimes he'd be able to fall asleep, but then, you know, two hours later, he's back up again. Yep, yep, yeah. And that's the problem a lot of insomniacs have. You know, uh, so yeah. Sometimes they can get off to sleep, but when mm -hmm. they do, boom, they're back awake. Yeah, and then you're sort of filled with, um, there's an uneasiness. You can't get, you can't get relaxed to get back to sleep. No, it's terrible. Because yeah. You're, you're not, you can't really do anything productive. You know, it's not like you can just get up and do a bunch of work. Right. Uh, you're just in this kind of limbo that nothing fixes, you know, mm -hmm. reading or TV or anything. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so we, so we dang out. 
to go down and walk, sit and watch the ocean, you know. Oh. Sit out there until the sun start coming up. Yeah. Then it'd be kind of pretty to see at that time because most people you're not going to normally oh. go out at that time. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, we look down the you know shoreline down towards San Diego, and there's lights down there, and there's ships, you know, that oh. coming and going, and, mm -hmm. and so you know, it's yeah, it's beautiful. It's a gorgeous place. Wow. Yeah. Way up in the cliff. Yeah. Yeah, but I felt you know I felt so bad for him. There's very little I could do. I, you know, we talked about things, and and we had a lot of light moments too. Okay. Uh, you know, because he, you know, he was quite a jokester. Yeah. And he loved a good joke. And you know, it's funny, but he loved laughing at himself. You know. Okay. Like, like we were in this one room. It was like an underground grotto. It's huge in there, and there are trees that stand up in there and go up to the ceiling, and they're all lit with. Uh, Lights, you know. Oh, it looks wow. like yeah, okay. it looks like you're outdoors. Mm -hmm. And uh, so anyway, we were in there, and we were talking, and you know, Michael spun around kind of to walk the other way, <laughs> <laughs> and he bumped straight into that tree. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a real clumsy thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I didn't think he was ever going to stop laughing. Oh. Just rolling on the floor. He just <laughs> stop laughing. <laughs> oh well that's always good when you can laugh at yourself you know oh yeah 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 so you know lo those are all the things that when i think about michael mm -hmm. those are all the things i think about now i, I couldn't do it the really first couple of years but yeah you know, now i've come to appreciate all those times and the funny things that happened and oh sure all the good laughs we had together and yeah. You know, that kind of stuff. Those are the things that are worth remembering. Sure, sure. And it's always, you know, when you share stories like like you did last time and what you're sharing now, it's always, it always start, you know, it's like stark contrast to everything that's always in the media. It just, yeah. it's it's like they're, com they're, they're reporting on a, um, boy, I'm really lost for words today. Uh, um, you know, like it, it a facade of, of, of like a completely different person than than who he was well and that's you have to understand that that's what the media wants to hear oh sure yeah the media doesn't care about my stories yeah because I don't you know I don't know anything bad about Michael so I don't have anything bad to report right right and that makes me ineligible for right. <laughs> to talk about Michael because you know, because I spend a lot of time with them, and I, I don't know anything bad about them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they're just, their goal is ratings, and, you know, yeah. I, I think we had talked about that in our last interview, too, about different things and how you've been offered um, money at different points yeah. by tabloids and uh, to tell, you know, to tell something bad. Right. And it it's just sad that, that it's media is like that, but... Well, and, you know, people support it because a lot, of, a lot of the media pays for those little stories. And oh, right, so, right. So you have to understand that, you know, some, not everything you read is the truth. <laughs> oh, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and, you know, a lot of stuff is made up. Like, Michael used to get really upset with with people that he kind of did business with, things like hairdressers and that kind of stuff, and you know, okay. he'd read something in a magazine or something, or see something on one of those shows on TV, mm -hmm. something about him, his hairdresser talking about, and he would get so mad, he said, these people don't know anything about me. Mm -hmm. How can they be talking about me when they don't know anything about me? Yeah. And that used to just fry him. Oh, sure. Because they were, you, and you know they were getting paid to to do that probably to yeah either, well they're either getting paid or you know people just just for fame just want to be on tv yeah you yep. know they'll say anything you want if they can be on tv sure that's true so you can't you can't trust all that stuff mm -hmm. yeah yeah and you know and that's you know in fact that's one of the things again right now that you know it's funny because even now 
there's you know more and more stories coming out, and, and some of the things that that are going on right now, yeah. um, you know, you've got the the AEG versus Catherine Jackson trial, yeah. which yeah. is obviously bringing up a lot of things. Yeah. Um, you have the accusations or the what I'll refer to as the false accusations by Wade Robson, yeah. <laughs> and um, you know, and, and he was Tom Ezra's strongest witness in the 2005 trial. Yeah. Um, just ridiculous stories. And well, he's you know. I, th I think I, I think I emailed you and said, you know, my take on that is mm -hmm. that Wade needs money. He's got a family. Yeah. And he may not be doing very well. And he looks over there at Michael Jackson Estate, mm -hmm. you know, making two hundred eighty million dollars or something. Right, right. <laughs> and he's thinking, mm, I'd love to have some of that. Right. So you start out by these accusations, and usually, you know, if it gets any traction, then you. You know, file a civil suit, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, so I, that's that's all I'm thinking of because that that just isn't true. When oh he no! Perjured himself in court. Then. It, right, right, yeah. It just it, it none of it made any sense, and and people were shocked, including including Tom Mesero. You know, yeah. there was a shock of what in the world just happened here because this. You know what he's coming out with now. It doesn't make any sense, and no, it doesn't. But see, he doesn't have to face his good friend Michael now. Right. Michael exactly. Is dead, mm -hmm. And he doesn't give a shit about the Jackson family. Yeah. So he, you know, he's going to go for the bucks. We'll mm -hmm. wait and see. Yeah. They're going to. He's going to try at least, hoping maybe that they'll settle for something. You know. Right. Right. And there's attorneys working behind the scenes right now. Okay. Yeah, I hadn't heard. I know there was there was supposed to have been. A hearing I thought earlier this month, but I I didn't I had so much going on I didn't pay attention to what if there was, had been any kind of ruling. But I know that there's more stories out there now in tabloid media, so I'm assuming something's still brewing. Oh, is that right? Yeah, there I I was actually just sent a few different stories um, recently where he's now supposedly giving more details. I actually didn't go to read them, oh. um, but I was sent them, um, you know, a couple different stories, and yep. people were saying, you know, he's, he's starting to come out with more, trying to say that um, uh, Michael brainwashed him and did, you know, j just crazy, yeah. <laughs> crazy stuff. So, um, so you, so basically, in your opinion, this is all, because then there was Liberace's former lover I think that came out and started saying he had an affair with Michael and, I mean <laughs> these people <laughs> see, that, see but that's the thing with, with Michael Jackson you're always going to have this yeah. this is going to go on way past our generation mm -hmm. this is going to be going on forever the, you know all these stories and things are going to crop up and and you know it, it's it's just so hard for the general public to sort it out I, I don't right. have a problem with it but I know that, you know, people that never knew Michael, mm -hmm. you know, this is all very confusing for them. Oh, yeah, yeah, because they, you know, the, a lot of the public will just listen to this and, and believe it. Of course. But without even, you know, research, well, they won't take the time to research it or, no, no. you know. No, no, they won't. Yeah, and it, so it, it, it's, you know, I know a lot of, a lot of people in the fan base get very upset about it because they feel that it's it's hurting his legacy, but yeah. I think I think when people look at, you have to look at what kind of person he was, and yeah. even, I mean, I obviously never knew him. I just go by the research that I did for the website and yeah. different people I've talked to, like you, who, who did know him. Yeah. And and even just watching some of his videos, you get, a, as far as, um, you know, when he did different interviews and things yeah. that, of that nature, you, you get a feel immediately for what kind of person he was, versus, yeah. and it's just so different from what, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Uh and and I think you know I think Wade's going to keep doing this. He, he'll, this is his way of pushing the Michael Jackson estate. He's going to keep coming out with stuff. Okay. That's yeah. what I mean about the attorneys working in the background. Oh, okay. And they'll okay. keep on yakking until the family or the attorneys for the family says, "Listen, let's give him a couple hundred thousand dollars and tell him to go away." Yeah. Yep. And I think that's what he's banking on. Okay. I don't think he's even thinking about a trial. I think he's just thinking about pushing them enough until they decide to shut him up. Yeah, so he gets what he wants and... Yeah, well, he I, may not get as much as he wants, but he'll get something. Mm-hmm. I, I, I have such a hard time understanding people like that. I do too. Yeah, it just... 
you know, I just, I, I don't know how you can, it, it, obviously they don't have a conscience. Well, you, you, when you continue to break trust like that, mm -hmm. I would never break my trust with Michael. You know, no. I never gave any interviews in all those 20 years. I refused all of them. Yeah, good for you. And, <laughs> and yeah, I just stayed away from the media. Mm -hmm. uh, knowing how the media viewed Michael, I didn't want to get involved in that at all. Yeah. But that's that's part of the respect that I had for him. And I, I wouldn't change that, you know, I, and I wouldn't do anything to harm Michael's uh, legacy. No, no. First of all, there, I don't have anything that would do that. And secondly, mm -hmm. even if I did, I, you know, I wouldn't say anything. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now there was, and this, and you don't need, you don't have to answer this if you don't want to. It's just something that was interesting that came up in, um, I don't know if you saw this, in the, there was a uh, Paris, you know, Michael's daughter Paris had given a de deposition before this trial. Yeah. And she was asked about Grace Ruamba, and I'm not sure if you were around her at all during that time, but um, I get... I, I was. Okay, because she, she came out and said that she actually had some not so great things to say, which I was, I had heard this story before. Um, I wasn't sure if it was true or not, but she she said that um, a lot of times that Grace would tell security she was Michael's wife, and that Michael would wake up and find her in bed next, you know, next to him, and um, and I was surprised, you know, for Paris to be saying this, and it was actually a video. It was on YouTube. Yeah, uh, Lori showed me that thing. I was, okay. Uh, I was shocked by that. You know, I spent quite a bit of time around that family, and Grace yeah. was always there. Okay. And she was always like. For, except for the times when Michael and I got up middle of the night, you know, she was around for most of our conversations. Okay. And and uh, you know, like most nights at you know around bedtime or so, you know, we'd all or after or in the evening after dinner, we'd go, we'd all pile into Michael's bed. You know, we'd all sit on the bed. Okay. And sit around and talk. Sure. That's something we always did. Mm hmm And uh, Grace was always there. Oh, okay. And I didn't. I never saw any conflict between Michael and Grace or any conflict with the children. I thought Grace was a wonderful person. Now, okay. I might be all wrong, but th that's my experience. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, that's good to hear that because, yeah, I, I, I wasn't sure, you know, you you see this and you think, oh, wow, you know, and but maybe to, you know, maybe, his, maybe she's seeing it differently now that she's older or... I don't know. Yeah. yeah.